In this video, we're going over how to use the LG Aristo 5 for beginners. Hey everyone, thank you for joining us today. We are back with another tech video and today we're going to show you how to use the LG Aristo 5. Really quick guys, if you find this video helpful, make sure you hit the like button. Make sure you also subscribe and tap the bell to turn on post notifications so it can be alerted every time we post new videos. Today we're going to walk you through the basics on how to use the LG Aristo 5. And we're going to go over everything from navigating the screen, how to use the buttons, uh, how to download apps, how to make calls, how to send text messages. We're going to go over all the basics. So uh, do us a favor, um, settle in and uh, leave a comment down below if you find the video helpful as well. All right, let's get started. The first thing we're gonna show you is the buttons. So on the left side of the phone, you will find volume up, volume down, your Google Assistant button, and on the right side, you'll find your power slash your standby button. Now, the way this works is just tapping the button will wake up the screen. Tapping it again will turn off the screen. And if you hold down on the button for about two seconds, it will prompt you to either power off the phone or to power off and restart the phone. So that's how you would turn the phone off. This phone uses a micro USB charging cable for you to charge it up. So just that's the name of it and nothing at the top of the screen here. On the back, you will find your fingerprint scanner and we'll show you how to set that up a little bit later on in the video. All right. So if you want to get into the phone, you'll need to first tap the power button and then take your finger and just drag it across the screen. Try that one more time. Wake up the phone, take your finger, put it on the screen and just drag it straight up. And that's how you'll wake up the phone. Now, once we set up the fingerprint scanner, you can then use that to unlock the phone simply by just taking your finger and just tapping it right over this fingerprint scanner and it will automatically wake up the phone and take you to this screen. Okay, so this is the home screen and if this is your very first time using a smartphone, um, I can tell you that uh, the phone is put in kind of a weird mode out of the box. It's called gesture mode. Uh, normally with older Android phones, you'll have buttons at the bottom of the phone that you'll use to navigate the screen. However, this phone comes in the gesture mode, and just to show you really quickly how this works, um, this little bar at the bottom of the screen here is how you um, navigate to different things. So for example, if I were to go to uh, Google Chrome right here, which is your web browser to go on the internet, if I were to go here and I wanted to go back to the home screen, I would have to swipe, I have to put my finger under this little black bar and swipe up, or excuse me, swipe up like this. And that's how you would get back to the home screen. It's a bit confusing. I'm gonna show you a little tweak that's gonna help make your life a lot easier using this phone. So swipe down from the top of the screen, tap on the little wheel in the corner to go to the settings, tap on display, and then go to navigation bar and you're gonna switch the style from gesture to button. And this will give you the more traditional look for an Android phone. Now we have our three navigation buttons at the bottom of the screen. We'll have a home button, a recent apps button, and a back button. So if I wanna go back to the home screen, now all I have to do is tap on the circle at the bottom and that's gonna take me back to the home screen. So this little tweak alone is gonna make it so much easier for you to use this phone. Now, let me just do a quick demonstration on how these three buttons work because you'll use them to do um, most of your navigating on the phone. So again, let's use Google Chrome as the example. Again, this is if you wanna go on the internet and search something. We'll go to Chrome. Let's move past that. And this would be the main screen of the, your web browser. Now, if I wanted to go back to the main screen, I tap on that circle at the bottom here, the home button. That's gonna take me back to the home screen. Now, if I wanna go back to Google Chrome, keep in mind, I just opened that app and I went back to the home screen. I didn't close the app, so I can go back to it whenever I want simply by hitting this button, 
which is called your recent apps button. By tapping on this, it'll show me anything that I've recently opened and allow me to get back to it quickly. So I just opened Google Chrome. I can tap here to go back there, or I can hit recent apps again, swipe over, and I can go back to my settings wheel, or excuse me, my settings app. This is where we just made that tweak to change the buttons. So this button is just great for moving between the different programs. Now keep in mind, if you're new to smartphones, again, I'm gonna use the word app a lot, and app is short for application. Think of an app or an application like a program on a computer. So computers call um, the software programs and phones call the programs apps or uh, applications. So if I say app, just know that it's a program. So these different apps that you might have opened to do something or it could be a game, you can always get back to it simply by hitting this recent apps button right here. Now, if you actually want to close an app, if you say, hey, I'm finished using the web browser and I want to close it, you would go to this screen and just swipe up. And that's how you actually close an app that's running. This also helps you free up uh, memory the phone is using because now these things aren't running. So I can just swipe up on all these different things, all these uh, apps I had open previously, and it will uh, help the phone move a little bit faster. Now we're gonna to go to settings to demonstrate how this back button works. So this button is specifically used for going back one step. So when we were in the settings, if you remember, we went to this main screen first. This was the main screen of the settings app. And then we tapped on display and then we tapped on navigation bar. Now, if I wanted to go back one screen I can hit the arrow up here all the way in the corner, or I can use my back button and I can just tap one time and it will take me back one screen. Now, if I want to go back another screen, I can tap it again and it will take me back one screen. So that's really what the back button does. It just takes you back one step or one screen in the app. Now, if you get to the main screen of the app, which is this, this is the main screen of the settings app, if you hit the back button again, it will take you out of the app back to the home screen. So that's how these three buttons work. Back button, navigation button, or excuse me, home button, and recent apps. These are the main three buttons you'll use to uh, navigate or maneuver the phone. Next, I'm gonna show you uh, what is called the notification panel. So. You just take your finger, start at the top of the screen, and just swipe all the way down. And this is the, what I would say, the main control center of your phone. Uh, anything that you set up on your phone, all the uh, important notifications or alerts from those apps will show up in this section. So for example, if you were to um, log into your email address, if you have a new email, it's gonna show up in this section. If someone sends you a text message, it'll show up in this section. In fact, your phone will make a noise that'll tell you that you received a new message, and sometimes there's a pop-up that'll show up briefly that you have a new message, and if you wanna check it, you have to swipe down from the top of the screen, and then you'll see the message in this section. And then from here, you would just find that notification for example, this one says LG keyboard, but like it could say Gmail, for example, and then you would tap on that and it would take you to the Gmail app. So this is where all, again, those important alerts and notifications are gonna come through. And then at the top of the screen here, you have what are called notification switches. Now these different switches control different functions on the phone. For example, if you want to connect to Wi-Fi, maybe your home Wi-Fi network, you, you would use this switch, which is called the Wi-Fi switch. Now, if it's lit up in blue, it means that your Wi-Fi is turned on. If it is clear like this, it means that it's not turned on. So looking at my screen, you can tell quickly that my Wi-Fi is turned on, but my Bluetooth is turned off. Now, if I wanted to turn Bluetooth back on, I would just simply tap on the icon, and now it's gonna light up in blue, 
and now my Bluetooth is going to start looking for devices to connect to. So if, for example, if you have Bluetooth headphones or a Bluetooth speaker and you want to connect to it, you just need to first make sure that it's lit up in blue and then it will prompt this menu that will allow you to quickly connect to a Bluetooth device. If you want to connect to a Wi-Fi network, you would need to first make sure this icon is lit up in blue and then you can take your finger and carefully just hold down on it for about one second. It'll then take you to the uh, Wi-Fi section of your settings and it'll show you all the available Wi-Fi networks. So you would look for your home network or if you were out at a Starbucks or somewhere where they have public internet, you just find the network and tap on it. And from here, you would just type in the password, hit connect, and then you're connected to that Wi-Fi network. So that's how that works. And again, specifically, we're talking about these different switches, but specifically how you use the switches. Now, one other tip is, um, so I swipe down from the home screen, or actually if I'm anywhere on the phone, you could be in an app or a game, you can always swipe down from the top to get to this section. If I swipe again, it'll give me more options. So for example, airplane mode, or your flashlight, if you wanna turn on your flashlight, you would do it from here. Battery saver mode, do not disturb. You have all these extra options in this section. So just explore to see exactly all your options. Um, if you wanted to turn off your GPS, for example, you would just turn off location. So that's how that works. And you always have a shortcut to your settings in this menu as well right here. So whether it's open all the way or just slightly, you're always gonna have that settings wheel in the corner to get to the settings. So that is the notification panel. Now next, I wanna show you how to set up your fingerprint scanner so you can basically use your finger to unlock the phone. You're going to swipe down, we'll go to that settings section. And you'll need to go to lock screen and security. From here, go to fingerprints and hit next. Now before you set up a fingerprint, you always have to set up a backup security method in the event that your fingerprint scanner gets damaged and you can no longer unlock the phone. Using that, you'll have some other method to get into your phone. So the easiest method is to use the uh, pattern or the pin, a pattern up here, excuse me. So I can make my pattern, for example, doing that, actually it needs to be longer than that. So I can do an L like this, hit next, do it one more time. Oh, and there you go. Hit confirm, and now our pattern is set up. And then we'll hit okay. And now we can start setting up the fingerprint scanner. All you're gonna do in this setting is just take your finger and put it on the sensor and it's gonna to begin to program your fingerprint so you can unlock the phone with your finger. And all I'm doing is just lifting my finger and then putting it back down the sensor. I'm trying to move the position so it can get a feel for um, all the areas of my finger. And we're almost there. And now we're set up and ready. I do encourage you to program multiple fingers. For example, I, when I hold my phone, I use my pointer finger, but I'll always program a, a finger on my other hand as well. In case I pick up the phone with my, you know, my left hand, I'll have that uh, pointer finger programmed as well. So now that we're done, if I put the phone to sleep and take my finger, put it on the sensor, and it will automatically wake up the phone for me. So. That's how you use the fingerprint sensor. Next, I'm gonna show you how to download applications or games on your phone. So you'll need to go to the Play Store section. And once you're in the Play Store, here's how this works. So this is your one-stop shop 
to download just about anything you would need for this phone. If you look at the bottom of the screen, it says games, apps, movies and TV, and books. So these are the different sections of the store. Think of this as your digital store to buy, again, whatever you would need for your phone or to download free if you're someone who doesn't buy apps but looking for free things. So if I wanted to download an application, let's say I wanted to get Uber on this phone, um, at the top of the screen you'll see a search. Now if you'll notice, uh, it doesn't show the search right now, but I need to just simply swipe down till we get to the top of the page and then you will see your search. So tap in this little box and I can do a search for an app. I can type in the app or I can just use the microphone and just say the app I want to search for. So Uber. So that's the easiest way to do a search for an app. And let's say you want to download the Uber app to your phone. Here it is. Just simply tap on the green install button and it will begin to download the app on your phone. Now Uber is a free app, so there's no charge. But if I found another app or a game, for example, that was not free, this is what it would look like. Let's find something. So this racing game. Oh, that's a video. Actually, it's not really that important that you see one that is not free. All you need to know is that if it's not free, this green button here won't say install. It will show you a price. It might say 99 cents or 199, whatever. Um, if it shows a price, it means that if you tap on this button, you'll have to pay for it. And then you'll have to link a credit card with your Google account. So just be aware of that if you don't want to pay for anything, make sure it says install. It doesn't have a price. That's it. Okay, so if we want to check and see if our app has finished downloading, we can just tap on this little circle here to go to the home screen and, oh, there we go. Our new Uber app has just popped up on the screen. So that's how we know that it downloaded successfully. If the app never shows up on the screen, it means that, um, you know, something may have gone wrong, but here it is. So I can then tap on Uber and I can then sign in and begin using the app. So that's how you download an application or an app. Um, the Play Store is also where, again, you go to download games. So if you wanted to download like a solitaire game or a slot machine app or, or anything like that, you would search it, download it, and then it would show up in uh, on these pages right here. So that's how you download applications. Next, I want to go over just um, a few more basic things and we'll be all done. So if you want to take a picture, you'll notice at the bottom of your screen, you'll have a camera. You can just tap on the camera here and then you can take a picture. So right here, I'm going to tap on the white circle to take a picture. And then I can quickly see the picture I took by tapping on this little box to the left here. Or I can always go to this, which is my gallery. And this is where I can see all the pictures that I've taken. So there's that. That's how you take pictures. If you want to take a video, you would just need to tap video first in the camera app. And then the button will turn red. That's how you know your own video. And then take your video. Now, if you want to make a phone call, tap on the phone icon. And this is the dialer. You can simply just type in your phone number. And then I'll hit the green button here to make the call. Now, if someone is calling you and you're trying to answer the phone, you'll see two buttons. You'll see a green button and a red button. Um, you'll need to do a swipe. So you'll, when you see the green button, you'll need to basically put your finger on it and just swipe over. That's how you get the phone to answer. 
if you want to decline the call, you put your finger on the red button. And I realize they're not on the screen right now. I'm not able to prompt a phone call, but I want to just explain to you what you need to do when it comes up. You'll see a little red circle. Put your finger on it and just slide. And that's how you'll uh, decline the call if you don't want to answer it. So that's how calling works. If you want to send a text message, tap on the message icon at the bottom of the screen here. And you'll just need to tap on the plus and type in the phone number. So I've typed in a phone number here. I'm going to hit the plus. And now I'm ready to text this number. I'm then going to tap in the box that says enter message here. And then I'm just going to say hi. And then hit the green button to send it. And that's how you send a text message. And if you type in the number incorrectly, it'll just say unable to send message to this user. And that is it. We have reached the end of our video. I hope this tutorial was helpful. Do us a favor again, hit the like button to like the video. Uh, make sure you share it if you know someone else who's trying to learn to use this phone. And leave a comment, let us know if the video was helpful. Thanks again for watching. Take care and as always, have a good one.